The Garmin Instinct 2 and the Garmin Forerunner 55 are two great options if you're looking to get into smartwatches to track your health, your activity, and just different metrics like that. But if you're like me and you were coming from an iWatch and switching over to a Garmin, you weren't really sure which one to get. So the too long didn't read version of this is essentially if you're just looking for basic activity, health, workout tracking, the Forerunner 55 is going to be a good option for you. If you're gonna want something that's top of the line analytics, a little bit clearer picture, and just more general options as far as solar charging and different looks and display options, the Instinct 2 will likely be a good fit for you. So I'll talk about the general similarities in them both. Now they both have an extremely comfortable band. I think Garmin really stands out here above the rest. The bands on both of these are incredibly comfortable. And the weight on the Forerunner 55 is remarkably light. Now, the Instinct 2 is a thicker, heavier, beefier, more tactical watch, if you will, but it's also pretty light as well. But if you're looking for lightweight and sometimes to forget that you're even wearing a watch, the 455 is probably going to be a good fit for you. The other thing that's great about the Garmin's is the battery life. Now, the battery life on the 455 is advertised as up to 14 days with normal smartwatch use. Now, in my experience, that has not been the case at all. Now, Garmin also advertises for the Instinct 2. The normal edition can get up to 28 days and also nowhere near that. Now, the battery still does last for a very long time. On the 4Runner 55, I've gotten up to about 8 or 10 days. And on the Instinct 2, I've gotten up to about 20 days. But it's still far shy of what they advertise. So you should know that going into it. Speaking of battery, the Instinct 2 also comes in a solar edition where they claim, depending on the amount of direct sunlight you can get, you may never have to charge your watch. For me, that's not that big of a deal. I don't go on month-long expeditions, so I'm always within a charger and I can just take it off and charge it for an hour or two and I'm good to go for another few weeks. Something else that's really great about these Instincts is the amount of analytics and data that you can get. Now, the Instinct 2 will track a little bit more than the Forerunner 55, but if you're just looking for basic workout health tracking data, the Forerunner 55 is going to do fine. The Instinct 2 can track a couple different things, but the really good thing about both of them is they're both remarkably accurate. I have tested and checked my heart rate manually and then compared it to what it says on here, and it's always within a couple beats. So it's generally pretty good. It can track your sleep, it can track your VO2, and it can just give you a good holistic picture of what your health has been like over the last day, seven days, and month. The other really good thing about this is the precision. Now the GPS precision with these is phenomenal. These even have the option for you to do a track run, and while you're doing a track run, it can get so specific that you can set exactly which lane of the track you will be running in. There's also the options to just upload a race track if you're preparing for a specific marathon or 10K or something like that, and it can set that out for you and create a training plan based off of that. Now, they both operate fairly similarly. Neither of these is a touchscreen, so again, if you're coming from an iWatch over to a Garmin product, they are a little bit different. The learning curve is a little bit steeper, but it's also not impossible to figure out. The top right button on both of these is going to act as essentially your select button. This one is how you turn on the GPS and this one on this watch is how you turn on the start and stop for your run. The bottom right is going to act as your set or back button many of the times. And then there's just different options to change the widgets. For example, if you push up on here, you can see there's calendar, weather, notifications, steps, body battery, heart rate, all the different widgets that you can go into and delve deeper and learn more about that. On here, the basic settings for things like a timer, alarm, different things like that, you press and hold the bottom right. And to go into the widgets, it's the same sort of thing. Just push the up button and the down and you can go through the different widgets that are available. Now, they both come in a variety of different colors and styles. The Instinct 2 comes with just a basic, a tactical, a camo. This is the Surf Edition. And I think they have another one called Dezel, which is geared towards long distance truck drivers. The Forerunner 55 comes in a variety of different colors and is actually a very cool looking watch.
Ultimately, for me, I originally had the Forerunner 55 and upgraded to the Instinct 2 simply because the Forerunner 55 on somebody like myself, I'm a little bit of a bigger guy, thicker wrists, it was just too small. This is a 42 millimeter bezel. This is a 45 millimeter bezel. I like the thicker, heavier look of the Instinct 2 versus the Forerunner 55. So which one should you get? Well, it really depends on how you plan on using it. Again, if you're just looking for basic health and activity tracking, the Forerunner 55 is gonna do mostly everything you need and then a little bit more. If you're looking for something that's going to last for extended periods of time, or maybe you are a surfer or a long distance truck driver, or maybe you are somebody that goes on extended hikes or camping, the Instinct 2 is probably going to be a better fit for you. Either way, you're not going to go wrong with either of them. So if you are looking to upgrade your smartwatch or maybe switch from an iWatch over to a Garmin, either of these is going to be a really good fit for you.